Hello dear listener please subscribe to our channel enjoy watching. It was a humid summer evening in New Orleans, and the air hung thick with the scent of rain-soaked pavement and jasmine. Sylvia Morin, a stunning woman with fiery red hair and a smile that could deceive even the most discerning, tapped her perfectly manicured nails on the mahogany bar of a dimly lit speakeasy. She was waiting for a message from her husband, Daniel, who had been away on an unexpected business trip to Chicago. Sylvia was accustomed to his last-minute departures, but something about this one felt different. Her phone vibrated against the wooden surface, and she snatched it up, her heart skipping a beat. The message was brief, almost mechanical, back in town. Dinner at the Crescent at 8 p.m. Don't be late. There were no affectionate words, no playful banter like there used to be. The lack of emotion was a glaring sign of how things had changed between them. Sylvia frowned but quickly masked it with a sip of her martini. She had little time to reflect on her husband's cold demeanor, as the man beside her, Julian Hart, leaned in, his hand brushing her thigh. Julian was her lover, a charming artist with a dark side that excited her in ways Daniel never could. They had been seeing each other for nearly a year, stealing moments in the shadows while Daniel was occupied with his ventures. That him? Julian whispered, his lips grazing her ear. Yes, Sylvia replied, her voice low and sultry. He's back in town. Wants to have dinner. Julian chuckled, his fingers tracing patterns on her skin. You should tell him you've got better plans tonight. Sylvia sighed, pushing Julian's hand away playfully. I have to go. It's our anniversary. Julian's smile faded slightly, but he quickly recovered. Anniversary, huh? You know, I could give you a gift he never could. She smirked, looking into his dark eyes. You already have, darling. But Daniel isn't the type to be ignored. I need to play my part. Julian watched her as she slipped off the barstool, grabbing her purse. Don't let him spoil our fun, he said, his tone hinting at something more sinister. Never, Sylvia replied blowing him a kiss before disappearing into the night. Daniel Morin watched from the shadows of a narrow alley as Sylvia hailed a cab. His heart pounded, not with the pain of betrayal, but with the cold, calculated rage of a man who had spent months preparing for this moment. The message he sent her earlier wasn't out of love, it was a final test. He had known about Sylvia's affair for almost a year, her clandestine meetings with Julian, the whispers and stolen kisses. He hadn't confronted her, hadn't let on that he knew. Instead, he had bided his time, gathering every piece of evidence, every sordid detail, until the time was right. And tonight, the time was right. As Sylvia's cab pulled away, Daniel followed at a safe distance in his unassuming sedan. He had chosen the Crescent for its discreet private rooms, where patrons could dine without prying eyes. A perfect place for the climax he had orchestrated. Sylvia arrived at the Crescent and was shown to a secluded table, where Daniel was already waiting. He looked calm, almost serene, which unnerved her. His steel-gray eyes betrayed nothing as he stood to greet her. Sylvia, he said, his voice smooth as ever. You look beautiful. Thank you, Daniel, she replied, forcing a smile. Happy anniversary. He nodded, signaling the waiter to bring the wine he had pre-ordered. As they exchanged pleasantries, Sylvia couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. Daniel was too composed, too polite. It wasn't like him, especially not lately. How was your trip? She asked, hoping to break the ice. It was productive, Daniel replied, taking a sip of his wine. But let's not talk about business tonight. I've arranged something special for us. Sylvia's interest peaked. Oh? What's that? A little surprise, Daniel said, his lips curling into a smile that didn't reach his eyes. Before she could press him further, two men in dark suits entered the room, flanking the doorway. Sylvia's heart skipped a beat. She recognized one of them as Mason, Daniel's longtime associate. The other man was unfamiliar, but his cold gaze sent a chill down her spine. Daniel, what's going on? Sylvia asked her voice trembling slightly.
Daniel leaned back in his chair, his expression finally revealing a hint of the storm brewing beneath the surface. You've been unfaithful, Sylvia. You've betrayed me. Sylvia's face paled, but she quickly composed herself. What are you talking about? Don't insult my intelligence, Daniel snapped, his voice low and dangerous. I know about you and Julian. I know everything. Sylvia opened her mouth to deny it, but the words died on her lips as Mason placed a thick folder on the table in front of her. With shaking hands, she opened it to find photographs, transcripts, and even videos documenting her affair in excruciating detail. Daniel, I... I can explain, she stammered, her eyes wide with fear. Don't bother, Daniel said, his voice cold. I've heard enough lies from you. The other man, who had remained silent until now, stepped forward. Mrs. Moran, he began, his tone professional yet menacing. Your actions have put you in a very precarious situation. Sylvia glanced at Daniel, who was watching her with a mixture of contempt and satisfaction. What? What are you going to do? Daniel took a deep breath, as if savoring the moment. You see, Sylvia, I'm not just the businessman you thought I was. I have connections, powerful ones. And I've decided that you and Julian are too much of a liability. Sylvia's blood ran cold. What do you mean? Daniel nodded to Mason, who produced a small vial from his pocket and placed it on the table. This, Daniel explained, is a very special concoction. It's odorless, tasteless, and within hours, it will make you disappear. No pain, no mess. Just, gone. Sylvia recoiled in horror, her mind racing. You can't be serious. You wouldn't. Daniel leaned in close, his eyes boring into hers. You've left me no choice. You made a mockery of our marriage, of everything I've worked for. This is the only way. Sylvia's hands trembled as she reached for her glass, but before she could bring it to her lips, Mason's firm hand stopped her. Not yet, Daniel said, his voice chillingly calm. First, you're going to call Julian. You're going to tell him to meet you at the old warehouse on St. Peter's Street. Why? Sylvia whispered, her voice barely audible. Because, Daniel replied, I want him to see what happens when you cross me. Tears streamed down Sylvia's face as she fumbled for her phone. With Mason and the other man watching her every move, she dialed Julian's number. When he answered, she forced herself to speak as calmly as possible, summoning every ounce of composure she had left. Julian, she said, her voice trembling. I need you to meet me at the warehouse on St. Peter's. It's urgent. Julian hesitated, sensing something was wrong. Sylvia, what's going on? Please, just come, she begged, her voice cracking. After what felt like an eternity, Julian agreed, and the call ended. Sylvia looked up at Daniel, her eyes pleading. Please, Daniel, don't do this. Daniel's expression remained icy. It's too late for that, Sylvia. Much too late. Later that night, at the abandoned warehouse, Julian Hart stepped into the dimly lit space, his footsteps echoing on the cold concrete. He had no idea that this would be his last night on Earth. Sylvia stood in the center of the room, her face streaked with tears, her hands bound behind her back. Daniel stood a few feet away, flanked by Mason and the other man, who held a syringe in his hand. Julian, Sylvia sobbed as he approached, I'm so sorry. Julian's eyes widened in fear as he took in the scene. What is this? Sylvia, what's happening? Daniel stepped forward, his voice cold as ice. This is justice, Julian. You took something that wasn't yours, and now you'll pay the price. Before Julian could react, the man with the syringe lunged at him, injecting the contents into his neck. Julian gasped, his hand reaching for Sylvia as his body began to convulse. Within seconds, he collapsed to the ground, lifeless. Sylvia screamed, her cries echoing through the empty warehouse, but Daniel remained unmoved. He watched as the man disposed of Julian's body with practiced efficiency, wiping away any trace of evidence. When it was over, Daniel turned to Sylvia, who was shaking uncontrollably. 
Now, he said, his voice devoid of emotion, it's your turn. Sylvia's eyes widened in terror as Mason approached with the vial. No, Daniel, please. I'll do anything. But Daniel was already walking away, his back to her as he gave the final order. Make it quick. Sylvia's screams filled the night air as Mason administered the poison. Within minutes, she was gone, her body slumping to the ground beside Julian's. As the first light of dawn crept through the windows of his penthouse, Daniel Moran stood by the floor-to-ceiling windows, looking out over the city. The storm had passed, leaving the streets below slick with rain. He had done what needed to be done. There was no remorse, no regret, only a sense of finality. Daniel took a deep breath, his hand resting on the cool glass. He had avenged the betrayal, and now it was time to move on. As he turned away from the window, his phone buzzed. It was a message from Mason. Everything is taken care of. No loose ends. Daniel smiled faintly and replied with a single word, good. He placed the phone on the counter and poured himself a glass of scotch. As he raised it to his lips, he couldn't help but think that justice, though dark and twisted, had been served. And in the end, that was all that mattered. If you leave a comment, tell us what you think about the story you heard, it's important to us and will help us find and tell stories that you find interesting. Thank you for watching us.